Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hello, Moon. Hello. So uh, my first question to you is actually, do you really identify as a cyborg? Yes, I do. Because <laughs> I, yeah? No, because I have a, a new body part that it's no longer organic, and cyborg comes from cybernetic organism. Mm -hmm. So I feel I'm a cyborg. Shall we see if anyone in the room identifies as a cyborg? Yeah. Can everybody, <laughs> let's, everybody who identifies as a cyborg raise his hand, please? One hand, two hands. OK, so I guess you're a little out of the ordinary. <laughs> so maybe we could talk about how it feels to be a cyborg. I, well, I think that being a cyborg is a, a way to identify yourself as a, an, a, an identity. Mm -hmm. And so I, can, I feel I'm a cyborg because yeah, I have a new body part made as cybernetics, but um, it's a very personal choice. I mean, actually, I was telling you before that I had a, an old friend back in Barcelona that he says that everyone is a cyborg because uh, there's satellites outside mm -hmm. the Earth mm -hmm. and that they work as a, an outside eye. Yeah. So he thinks that we have an out, and a third eye exploring space. And I think, yeah, there's so many ways to unite yourself with technology. You can be, maybe you can feel already a psychological union with technology or biological union. Yeah. Or maybe even neurological union. But still, it's different if there's like a satellite in the air, like 10,000 kilometers in the air, or uh, you have a phone in your pocket, or you actually have a sensor in your arm which can mm. detect seismic activity. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like how it feels to actually feel the, the Earth move, feel the Earth tremble? Yeah, it's, uh, I feel it's very different to know that the Earth is constantly moving than to actually feel it. Yeah. So maybe a good, because I, well, I, how it works is like I have a, an implant inside the yeah. arm yeah. and it's connected to online seismographs. Yeah. So every time there's a, a new data from anywhere in the, in the world, I feel a vibration inside the arm. Yeah. So now I'm here in, in Amsterdam, but if there's an earthquake in California or in Japan, I would feel a vibration inside the arm. And depending on the intensity of the earthquake, the yeah. vibration feels stronger or less strong. So, but so how but many times a day do you actually feel yeah, something? Yeah, many. Now, many. Uh, do you feel like an earthquake right now? <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, I'll let you know. Like, okay. But yeah, like, uh, you have to get used to this, to this new feeling, to this new sense. At the beginning, I was very aware of it, but now it's, it's normal, now it feels a good way to describe it is like I feel like I have two heartbeats, like, mm -hmm. like my own and the Earth beat. You yeah. can feel the yeah. Earth's heartbeat. Yeah, I guess. That's yeah. nice, that's beautiful. Like, but how does it like, change your perspective though? Like, if you really can feel the Earth living all the time in your arm, this must really change your perspective of yourself and of the world around you. Yeah, I feel much closer to nature and it made me realize how an, uh, unaware of, of how disconnected of our planet we are like. We've been, we, and we also have this bad image about earthquakes, but earthquakes have always existed and they are part of our nature. And our planet is alive and it constantly moves. Yeah. So earthquakes itself is not the bad thing. The bad thing is that humans haven't been able to adapt to this natural phenomena. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if we've been more aware of how our, our life, the, our planet is, maybe we, we wouldn't have been building cities in the very dangerous places, like at yeah. the edge of the tectonic plates. So I feel like maybe we need to relearn how to live in our own planet. So maybe extending our senses and being more connected to nature will, will understand better how our planet works. So and you say that we actually need technology to be able to feel connected to nature. Maybe we don't need it, but it's an option. <laughs> it's, so, yeah. but, but, okay, so you can feel Earth's heartbeat by feeling its seismic activity, but what other options are you, are you prepared to explore within this realm? Like, yeah, there's so many, so many things to, to explore, so many real things happening uh, around us that our senses don't don't allow us to explore. It's like depending with who we compare with, our senses are very limited. Yeah. There's so many natural elements going on in our planet that we cannot feel because of our senses. So, yeah, there's so many things that you can perceive ultraviolet. Like I, I feel like um, lots of times I, 
I suggest to just look at other species living in this planet, like animals, yeah. and just take one thing of an animal, how they explore the, the planet, and you can get really inspired. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't really need to think about science fiction or like invent anything, because already nature does amazing thing. I mean, immortality already exists in nature, because there's a jellyfish that never dies and keeps regenerating. So nature is already very mysterious and very exciting. So, but, okay, so the jellyfish is immortal, but do you have other, for everybody, like, do you have other examples you would like to explore, like? Myself, and yeah. like, for me, because uh, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a, a choreographer, so for me it's always been this line of movement research, so mm -hmm. I want to look, perceive movement in a deeper way. And as a dancer, I can create movement or I can find movement, and I've been finding movement in different ways. And my aim this year is to explore, to perceive the seismic activity on the moon. So it's another way to explore space. Is, like, is yeah. there seismic activity on the moon? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's less frequently, but it lasts longer, the moonquake. And yeah, I want to have the uh, sensors on my feet. So this will allow me to be physic physically on Earth, but my feet will feel the moon. So we feel that if we use internet as a new sense, we can become sense astronauts. We, don't, we no longer need to be astronauts, we no longer need to be physically on, on, on space. Mm -hmm. We can be on Earth and have new senses exploring space and have yeah, another type of sense exploration. So <laughs> you just told me that like, you identify as a cyborg. Wh when was the first time you actually told, you, for example, your parents or your family, like, hey guys, I'm a cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think I've never said that to my parents. Um, I, I, for me, it's the thing is that I never been to technology, to interested in technology or using technology as a tool. Since I was a teenager, I always found technology very distant or mm -hmm. cold and disconnected. But then, when I was using art. I was studying art, sorry. We were encouraged to use technology in our art pieces. Then I thought rather than using technology as a tool, if you use it as a part of the artist, then it becomes more natural. And then everything started for me as, a, as an art point of view. And then but I guess the world around us and journalists start using this word cyborg. And then I felt, oh yeah, maybe I am a cyborg. But it wasn't, I didn't have an image of a cyborg and then I saw myself. It was more natural. So w when did you implant the, 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 the sensor? I've, I've been feeling earthquakes since 2013. 2013. Uh, but at first it was outside and then inside. It keeps all the time evolving. So you say yeah. you feel earthquakes, you don't use the word sensor or no, any technological me, terms? <laughs> like no, because the technology keeps changing. Yeah. And I guess when you, you, want, you create a new sense, uh, uh, there's like two, 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 two things to think about. It's one, it's the sense itself, and one's like the body part. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to feel earthquakes, but then how I felt them, it keeps evolving and changing depending. First it was outside and big, and, well, and then it keeps evolving. So I, the, the sense, I, yeah, I've been feeling earthquakes since 2013, and how I do it, it keeps evolving. So but what the reason was for you to, to for choreography to feel the earth and like feel the movement and get inspired by that, or had it? Did you have other reasons to to do? No, it was uh, yeah. It started as a, as an art. I see this as cyborg art. Yeah. So I guess like the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation of a new sense. Mm -hmm. And for me, the seismic sense. This is called the seismic sense. It's my artwork, but it's an artwork that happens inside the artist. So I guess I'm the only one in the audience exploring this art. So in order to share what I feel, I, I then I create external artwork. It's like a photography, a photographer. You know, you first take the picture, and then in order to share the picture that you saw inside the camera, you reveal it. So I reveal it through dance and percussion and sculpture. Mm -hmm. I do. I use different different mediums to to share. But yeah, for me, it was a movement research project. I'm mm -hmm. looking for. Yeah. You have like a, your best friend Neil. Uh, uh, what's his surname again? Sorry. Harbison. Harbison. So. What's your partnership? Uh, like, how do you work together and, and how do you inspire each other? Yeah, Neil, Neil and I are friends since we were children. I know him mm -hmm. since I was eight years old. And 
Well, because he sees uh, the world differently, and we knew this because he sees him in black and white, we always compare, I mean, I always been aware that there's other ways of perceiving reality. Yeah, he so, sees the world in black and white. Yeah, in, with his eyes, yeah, yeah. but now he has this antenna that yeah. perceives uh, colors through sound mm -hmm. and beyond the visual spectrum. So mm -hmm. since, the very, since we were children, we, were, we would talk normally about how different our perception was, and we would, yeah, we would do art or do theater together, and we still do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we still explore the world together, yeah. So with Cyborg Foundation, you and Neil uh, run, um, is one of your goals to actually normalize cyborgs? Like, do you want more people in this room to identify as cyborgs in the future? Yeah, maybe this, the word cyborg has a very uh, has been maybe misused. Actually, we went to meet the man who who coined this word. Like they coined it. Uh, NASA asked to Manfred Kleins and the, the other client uh, to to come up with a new word. That uh, there was already bionic, but mm -hmm. they needed like a new word. And they coined. And the definition that they used about cyborg it was uh, human that modify themselves in order to survive in yeah. other environments, like in space. Yeah. So we feel that maybe we need to modify ourselves in order to survive on Earth, because humans have always, since the beginning of humanity, we always been changing the environment in order mm -hmm. to live more comfortable. But maybe now it's time to change ourselves in order to, to adapt better to Earth, like other animals have been doing, mm -hmm. and not damage so much our own planet. Yeah. So yeah, this word, it was, created like this, but then uh, science fiction movies use it, and a lot of our generation have this image of being a cyborg, it's being something, someone, some type of uh, robot that you want to kill mm -hmm. everyone and damage the world, but I, I think it's just a science fiction yeah. point of view, and then the new generations, I don't think they will have this percep perception of the world, and it will become more normal. You think it, it, it'll become more organic, so not like RoboCop or something, but like yeah, something which is actually attuned to nature and... Yeah, I mean, there's many ways of using technology, but I think more and more people are... There's this positive input. I mean, technology by itself is not bad. It's We are the yeah. ones who decide how to use this technology. And you can use this technology to damage, or you can use this technology to explore reality in a, mm -hmm. in a deeper way. And yeah, definitely, like if we admire other species living in this planet, or like we will learn to, to explore a planet in a, in a deeper way, then I, I guess it, it has positive imp outputs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you tell this story to people who are like uh, prejudiced against the word cyborg, they think, oh, robot, this is something technological because maybe people are a little afraid to put technology in their body. Like, what's your uh, uh, experience with how people react to you being a cyborg? Yeah, some people, some people are against it. Uh, some uh, very religious people that yeah. feel that God already, some people say that God already made us perfect, so why would you change? Mm -hmm. But it's Are you religious? Nothing. No. Okay. No. But it's, um, but for me it has nothing to do with, with perfection. I mean, I don't think it, it exists. It's mm -hmm. just an evolution. And I think it's very exciting. I mean, we don't need to wait for natural evolution in order to change, to change your perception. Like, we're living in a time that you can decide how to perceive the planet, and this is exciting. It's not... It's like an alternative way. It's more living life more intense, or like mm -hmm. it's nice. It's a, it's like designing yourself. And with the Cyber Foundation, we propose this, like the um, the alternative of deciding how you want to perceive reality. And yeah, we we encourage this. That for me, it was relevant movement because I'm a choreographer and I'm an artist. But maybe you want to perceive something different, and everyone has. Uh, can decide how, what they want to perceive that their senses cannot. Yeah. And this is the exciting thing. Maybe I imagine like going to a bar in the 50 years and apart from asking where you're from, I would ask what sense do you have? Like, how Ooh. did you decide what to perceive? What sense do you have, yeah. Yeah, it's like, how did you decide? It's like, oh, I perceive ultraviolet. I'm like, wow, so this is some ultraviolet. Or? So, but what would you actually advise everybody here who wants to actually explore this? 
like what should what steps should they take? What concrete steps should they take? Who should they call? Like <laughs> what what to do? <laughs> some people, yeah, it depends. Like some people say, uh, I want to be a cyborg and that's it. Like, mm -hmm. and they don't have a clear Im image or mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And I would, yeah, I would just tell them to look at other species or nature and uh, find a sense. Find something very concrete. Yeah. To to explore and then and then I'm sure this I'm sure there's some already some tools or technology that can already do that mm -hmm. uh, and then you and then when you find this what the specific thing you want to perceive and then a technology that it's similar to that then you can create like a body part mm -hmm. first first I would su suggest to we we create we say that it's exosense that you permanently put it outside your body, mm -hmm. and then when you know that you really want that and you get used to this, okay. then you, s you think about implanting it. So, but is it expensive? No, it's like, it's, uh, for me, for Civil Earthquakes, it was cheaper than my iPhone. It's, it's cheaper than your iPhone yeah, to become <laughs> a cyborg, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's just, you can you, you can extend your perception of reality with very simple technology. First of the earthquakes, I did a project about uh, detecting the speed of the people walking in front of me. I was mm -hmm. like, want I wanted to send my, the sense of speed, and this I use like the infrared sensors, so the same ones that you use to to dry your hands. Mm -hmm. If you put those sensors in your ears with uh, something that vibrates, it already changed. Your perception, or like changes you, your view. Yeah, no, like you can perceive, for example, if someone is approaching from behind. Oh my God! Like it just, it's just very simple sensors. It's it's we we don't use very sophisticated technologies. Just like technology that already exists. If you think rather than use it as a tool or as an app in your phone, in you if you think about put it in your own body, then mm -hmm. it changes. Your it perception. already changes you. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank I think you. Uh, we covered most of it. Uh, just one question to the audience. Like, is there anybody who would like to become a cyborg after hearing this talk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Success. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And have fun. And uh, we're going over to our break now. So uh, see you uh, later. At thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.